Hello y'all and welcome back. In this video I'm going to be describing, doing some legwork to describe the precise nature of Socrates' project, so what he needs to accomplish. We'll talk about the specific steps he takes to accomplish it uh, in the next video, but this is what he needs to accomplish. So again, his goal is to make the people around him better people. He wants to improve himself morally, but he primarily wants to help them become better morally. So how does he use philosophy, and we saw that he sees this as ethics, meaning systematic moral inquiry, with the purpose of becoming a good person. How does he use philosophy to do this? Before we go any further, it's worth taking a step back and considering some parallels between Socrates' project here and instances in our own life. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation where someone in your life that you cared about was really not doing well and needed your help? So maybe their mental health was poor or they were struggling financially, or they were involved with drugs and alcohol, or maybe some combination. Or maybe it was something more benign. Maybe they needed your help to get in shape. This happens, sometimes people work with me for that goal. Or to study or whatever. Now, think of, think of a case or cases like this in your life. And let me ask you a further question. For you to help that person, what is the first step? What must happen before anything else if you are going to effectively help that person get better in whatever way? Now, some people here, perhaps those with less experience, might say something like, well, you need to plan with them. You need to make a plan about what are their goals and how can we you know, map out practical ways to accomplish them. Or you might say, well, I need to check, make sure that I have the time and emotional bandwidth to help them. Or you might say, well, we need to be clear on you know, the finances we're working with or whatever. And while those are important steps, those are not answers to the question, what must happen first? Anyone that has been in this situation with somebody else knows that the very first step is that the person themselves must acknowledge that they are not where they need to be. They themselves and nobody else must get to the point where they acknowledge that they need to change. This comes even before them asking for help. Asking for help is important, but that comes later. First, they have to acknowledge that they are not where they need to be. And if they don't make that acknowledgement, all the help that you offer, all the ability and skill and love and care and devotion that you have is respectfully worthless. Because if, if they don't make that fundamental acknowledgement, they will have no desire to change, so they will take no steps to change, so they will not change. And you can be the best therapist or counselor or financial planner or boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, whatever, and if they don't make that acknowledgement, that fundamental desire to change is there, that, that acknowledgement that they are not where they need to be, all of your effort, all of your time will be wasted. And as you know, if you've been in this situation, best case scenario, nothing happens. And what often happens in these situations is you get burnt out. It's very hard. Somebody around you is miserable. They're making people around them miserable. They might complain a lot. But when you ask them, how are you doing, it's never their fault. It's always someone else's fault. It's always this or that. It's never them that needs to change. That kind of person will make no progress. So this is this first step here is that the person themselves must admit that they are not where they need to be. Okay, but here we have a problem. Almost everyone will admit that they are not where they need to be physically. So we talked about these New Year's resolutions. People who are not in shape will acknowledge. They're honest. You know, they say, oh, yeah, I got to get in shape. Got to get into the gym. Uh, but gym people do this as well. In fact, nobody is clearer. Nobody will tell you with more alacrity about their physical weaknesses than people who go to the gym a lot. I've spent the last 20 years in gyms, and if you ask me, what are your physical weaknesses? Where do you have to improve? I could list five things without stopping to think. So people will admit this very readily. People will also admit very readily that they are not where they need to be financially. People that are in bad shape financially will point out their financial flaws and say, I gotta get more money here, I gotta get better here, get my credit score up, whatever. But wealthy people, people who are in really good shape financially, are also, this is directly analogous to the physical case, um, really good, in fact, much better than the ordinary person, in most cases, about acknowledging where they can improve. And uh, they also, almost always, in my experience, have some plan about how they can improve. So people are very quick to admit that they're not where they need to be physically. They're quick to admit that they're not where they should to be uh, financially, that they're not where they should be when it comes to maybe investing time with friends and family, loved ones, many areas of life. But Socrates does not care about many areas of life. In fact, he only cares about one. He only cares about the area of moral character. And here's the problem. 
Because while people will admit their deficiencies, that they are not good in all these other areas, people will do anything rather than admit that they are not a good person. They will say, well, I'm not perfect, which is, of course, true, right? Nobody's perfect. But they say, I'm not perfect, but I'm good. I'm fine. They're very quick to point out the moral flaws in other people, even people they love and care about. But when it comes to the question of, are they themselves a good person, people will do anything to make excuses for their character and behavior other than say, yeah, I am not good. I need to change. But when you put all the pieces together, you see that there's an enormous challenge that Socrates is facing. So he, he wants and needs, and we'll see more about specifically why this is in a minute, to make the people around him better people. The first step in that process is that they themselves must acknowledge that they are not where they need to be. They must come to that realization themselves. They cannot be bullied or hectored into this. But third, of all acknowledgments, this is the one people are most reluctant to make. And further, there's almost nothing more provocative that you can do than trying to convince somebody that they are not a good person. Maybe like insulting their kids or something would be more provocative, more likely to get you know, an angry or violent reaction. But aside from that, trying to convince them that they're not a good person uh, is almost guaranteed to be a losing battle. So people will just do anything other than admit this. When you put these three things together, Socrates has a Herculean task. He has to help the people of Athens improve. This requires that they acknowledge that they're not good people, but people will do anything other than acknowledge that they are not good people. So he has his work cut out for him. How does he use philosophy, systematic moral inquiry, to accomplish this? We will look at this question in the next video. Thanks.